Hello, you're tuned in to the Benefit Broadcast, the Conceal or Reveal edition. My name's Dr. Anita Mitra. I'm an NHS gynaecologist and author of the book, The Gynae Geek, Your No-Nonsense Guide to Down There Healthcare. And today I'm joined by my good friend, Karen Hobbs. Hi, I'm Karen Hobbs. I'm a stand-up comedian who has had cervical cancer. This episode is all about challenging the C words. If you have a cervix, you're eligible for a cervical screening test, but lots of people aren't attending their appointments for various reasons. I think it's really important to reinforce to everybody who's listening that actually it's not a test for cancer. Mm. It's actually a test to try and prevent cancer. Now, Karen, can you tell us what it was like to get diagnosed with cervical cancer at such a young age? So this is going to sound odd because it's weird, I think, to talk about anything vaguely positive when it's under the cancer umbrella because cancer to us is something scary and sad. That's and a horrible It's word. horrible, yeah. We don't want to talk about it. We shy away from it. But it was, weirdly, one of the best things to happen to me because, first of all, it was caught early. There's no point beating around the bush, <laughs> pun intended. Um, there's no point beating around the bush. I was diagnosed early. Why was I diagnosed early? Because when I had symptoms, I went to the doctor quickly. I was referred, had a colposcopy. So I was, I was bleeding between periods, not much. I was on the pill. Um, I was back to back in my pill packet because I was on holiday and you know, I wanted to wear my bikini. And, and that's uh, absolutely fine to do. That's healthy, that's that fine, out. isn't it? Yes, yeah, fine. So, absolutely. Yeah, so you're not angry at me for back to back in my not pill? Not at all. All good. Um, so I was having a bit of like brown discharge whilst taking all these packets. And I just thought, you know, my body wants a little bleed. I'm not letting it. So that's why there's a bit of brown discharge. That's what I thought. Then I got back from holiday and had sex with my then boyfriend. And it was penis and vagina, off we go. And when we finished having sex and um, his penis removed itself from my vagina, there was bright red blood everywhere. Not, not the dark, rusty discharge. It was like there was a cut. So I thought, he was cut or I was cut. I thought, you know, what, what's happened? Um, and that happened a few more times. So that, along with the, the dark discharge, made me think, OK, I need to go and see my doctor. Went to my doctor. She did a speculum examination, standard, um, and could straight away see that my cervix looked angry and that I needed to be referred for a colposcopy. So went for the colposcopy a few weeks um, later and was kind of reassured at every point that it's unlikely to be cervical cancer because, um, you know, I was young and all that sort of thing. Got to colposcopy um, and um, the, the, the camera was on the outside, just the speculum was on the inside, as you've said. And But there's a big screen, isn't there? Mm. Um, so the doctor can see the cervix, which looks like a donut doesn't it? Kind of head on, it looks like a Yeah, donut. I always explain it as being like a donut. It looks like and a donut. And it's great that there is a screen, but yes. if you don't want to look, you don't have to. No, you well. don't have to look. You don't have to look, but it's there for the medical professional. I am nosy and curious, so did want to see. And it was, you know, those, it kind of sounds like what, you know, sort of those film moments where everything changes in that one second. So um, the, the doctor examining me, doing the colposcopy and the screen was there so I couldn't quite see unless I unless I turned and after looking um doing the colposcopy for maybe a minute or two she said I'm just going to get someone more senior and I thought oh <laughs> I've got cancer and you just it's this weird thing but until you know mm. you can't really explain it any other way but I, but I just knew in that moment mm -hmm. so then a man came in in a three-piece suit I thought okay this is not ideal um, and he said you can have a look if you want he was taking a biopsy and I looked on the screen and Anita you could just see it there was just the set like the little donut little donut thing you could just see this like bright lump on on the donut it was just there I saw that panicked was getting dressed was doing the whole like hobbling around with my tights and I just sat down and was you know I was at this point really shaky really kind of disorientated and I just sat down and said to him is it cancer and he said well we need to wait for the results of the biopsy it would take a couple of weeks but you know when you need to leave with just that bit more information mm. I couldn't I couldn't wait two weeks not knowing anything so I did push a little bit and I said can you please just tell me what do you think and then he said well I've been doing this for 30 years and I would be surprised if this wasn't cancer 
So at that point, I didn't have waterproof mascara on. A nurse came in, it was a mess. It was, because I'd gone from, you know, it's probably, you know, something to do with my pill or something, you know, something not serious at all to, yeah, you probably have got cancer, come back in a couple of weeks. Let's go right back. What can they expect? What's it testing for? What happens? Tell me everything. Okay, so I think that's a really good question because often when we don't know about something, it makes it much more scary. Mm. So when you get your letter, you'll be asked to call, uh, call or contact your GP surgery and make an appointment. And on that day, what you do is you go, and I recommend you wear something nice and comfy. And it's really important to point out that you do not have to take all your clothes off. So you'll be asked a couple of questions to start with. First of all, when was your last period and what contraception are you using? So I would say write these down because on the spot it's always really mm. difficult to remember, isn't it? Um, and also, I don't know why, but contraceptives always have names that you just can't pronounce. So maybe take a picture and then you can just show it to whoever's taking your test. Then you'll be given time to undress. So you need to take your underwear off and any trousers. If you have a skirt, you can keep it on. A long dress or something, you can just hitch it up. Mm -hmm. Honestly, whatever you feel comfortable with. Keep your shoes on. If you want to, no problem. And then you'll be given something to cover yourself with, okay? And then you'll need to lie down and we'll show you how to position yourself. Normally what we do is ask you to bend your knees up with your feet as close to your bottom as you can. So you're lying on the bed? Yes, yeah. absolutely and you have your feet together and then you let your knees flop apart, okay? And this is a good position to take a smear test because what it does is it actually kind of slightly tilts your cervix forward and makes it a little bit easier for the person who is doing the test. And then what we do is we gently insert a speculum. So they're usually made of plastic, not those kind of like cold, nasty, horrible metal ones that you might see in movies. Mm. So plastic speculum, and that allows us to have a look inside the vagina because the cervix is right at the top. When we can see it through the speculum, we are going to use a very um, flexible plastic brush to sweep it around on the cervix and that is the sample that we need to take. And it's not like a bristly brush, is it? It's not kind of this scratchy thing. No, so obviously it does have bristles mm. because it is a brush, but it's not something that's, <laughs> that's really That's the definition scratchy. of a brush, Anita. <laughs> it has bristles. So yeah, it needs to basically exfoliate some of the cells mm. off the cervix because that's what we need for the sample. So what we do is we then take the speculum out, okay? And then while we're putting the sample into the special bottle that we sent to the lab in, we'll give you time to get changed. All right, it's time to check in with all of you and see what you've been saying on social media. What are they asking us, my darling? So the first question, and this is a good one, what support is there if I get a scary result from my smear? Whilst I said I was a stand-up comedian, which I am, it's all true, uh, my day job is working for the Eve Appeal, a gynae cancer charity, and with an amazing nurse, I run the Ask Eve helpline. So it's an information service. We offer support, advice, information on all sorts of gynae queries, including, as you can imagine, a lot of questions about cervical screening and cervical screening results. So um, we'll put the information for the helpline for the service um, at the end of the show, but the Eve Appeal, Ask Eve, I am there all day, every day to, to help people who are worried about the results. What is a worrying result? What is an abnormal result? What does that mean? So if you have HPV on the sample, but the cells are normal, nothing needs to be done for another year. OK, so we're going to give one year to see if that HPV is going to go away on its own. OK, because at the moment it hasn't caused the cells to become abnormal. If you have HPV and there are some abnormal cells, then we'll ask you to come to the hospital and meet one of the doctors or one of the nurses who specialises in something called colposcopy. So it's an examination. It doesn't mean that we're going to chop anything out. Mm -hmm. I just want to stress that so much. OK, we may take little biopsies. OK, and sometimes we may see something that looks very abnormal and we want to remove it, but we will explain everything to you during that appointment. And being invited for a colposcopy does not automatically mean you have cervical cancer. Correct. We talk about VAG all day, every day. It's my day job, it's my night job, it's your whole world. I want to talk about some stuff and shed light on things that it's difficult to talk mm -hmm. about. There will be people listening and watching that want to ask these questions but don't have anyone to talk to. So I want to be like 
the gorgeous sisters that everyone wishes they had. Getting that bit of paper that says something is the matter, whatever that is, mm -hmm. how do you kind of process that? How Because that's so much to go through, to go from one day just having a test to having something be the matter with your cervix and kind of waiting to find out. How do you deal with that? Well, I think this is why we need to get more people talking about this kind mm. of thing, because I think if you can then talk to your family or friends about it, then, you know, as they say, a problem shared is a problem halved. And also there are lots of great places, like for example, the Eve Appeal is a really great place to go for information if you're not sure. And also, of course, the NHS website. Mm -hmm. I remember my <laughs> most recent smear test, the results came back so quickly. I was like, oh my gosh, there must be something <gasps> yes. wrong. The letter drops and you think, what's going on? Absolutely. Yeah. but. It was normal, so that's good. So do you do your own smear test? No, I do not do my own smear test, <laughs> Some Karen. service check out. <laughs> no, no, I don't, but it would, no. it would be more convenient, but no, yes, I don't. Fine. Um, so I did go and have another healthcare professional do the yeah. test for me. And yeah, the result came back really quickly, but mm. it might be a couple of weeks. Mm. So the timing doesn't really necessarily depend on what the result is going to be. So don't panic if you get your result three days later. Exactly. Yeah. And we normally need to see you in a couple of weeks in the colposcopy clinic. Now, a small proportion of people might have a very abnormal result and therefore we need to see you a little bit quicker. And if that's the case, then we'll get you in and we'll see you and it will explain everything. But we'll see you in the clinic. And this is where we're going to do our examination to have a direct look at the cervix and see if we can actually definitely see anything that is abnormal. Because remember, the screening is just a test to see if you're higher risk than the general population of having a disease. And the colposcopy is where we do the diagnostic test to tell you exactly what is going on. And again, it feels weird to say I felt lucky, but I think you always kind of compare yourself to other people in a similar situation and obviously now kind of being sort of the cervical cancer poster girl um self-appointed and working for the eve appeal i speak to people every day who are mm. in much worse situations and who are more poorly and you must see people every day that are so much you know their, their disease is so much more advanced than than a, a late stage one so i i do feel lucky even though it was incredibly unlucky to get cervical cancer in your 20s, I feel lucky that because I had the confidence and that's because you know I grew up in a household where I felt comfortable talking about my body and bleeding. I felt comfortable and confident and, and safe in my body and my home and my sex life to, to go to the doctor and say something isn't normal. And I knew that it was outside of my normal bleeding. I knew the difference from what was normal for me to what wasn't, which led me to get the early diagnosis. So I'm kind of giving myself a pat on the back, but also completely appreciate that I was in a privileged position. And there are so many reasons, like we've been talking about earlier, that people wouldn't be able to have that type of access or confidence or or as fast a diagnosis as I did. So I, I do kind of want to acknowledge the the privilege and the um yeah the luck in, in being able to get that. Well Karen, thank you so much mm. for sharing your story. I know that it really can't be easy to talk about but I do know that lots of people will have been helped by hearing your story because I know that you've told it lots of times before and I know that I've sent lots of my patients to your Instagram account to Eve Appeal to talk to you and we've done lots of events before where you've spoken about it and people have have really found it helpful so thank you. <laughs> Wear something really comfortable, easy to take off, put on again. Maybe you want to wear a long dress or a long skirt. Keep your socks on and also don't forget that you don't need to wax or shave or do any form of hair removal at all. It's not going to get in the way and I really don't mind if you have hairy legs. Your doctor or nurse won't care if you've got a full bush, right? And I've probably got hairier legs than most of you anyway, so it's fine. Well, my good friend and Dr Anita Mitra, I think we have covered so much in this conversation. Karen Hobbs, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to speak to you and thank you for sharing your story. I think we've really covered a lot of information. And thank you so much to everyone who's listened to this episode of the Benefit Broadcast, the Conceal or Reveal edition. Please like, subscribe and tell all your friends about it. Do tune in next week when we'll be back with a different set of hosts. Bye. Bye.